Hey there, boils and ghouls. It's your friend Taryn Tats. I'm back with another video. And uh, today, I finally got it. It's been a little bit of a journey, but today I have my 4K Blu-ray of The Exorcist. Not exactly the edition I thought I was going to get, but still a nice edition nonetheless. And uh, I'll get to that in just one second. If you could just indulge me, I just wanted to show you a couple of other things that I got. Um, yeah, some nice pickups for, you know, good cheap prices. Uh, this one here um, I got because it's you know, part of the uh, Scream Factory sale on Amazon. And honestly, this is a really, really good remake. And I honestly do suggest it. It is it is a fun watch. And that is Slumber Party Massacre. I mean, you guys know I did... Excuse me. Uh, here a little while back, I did do a, a, you know, a 4K review for Slumber Party Massacre 1 and 2. And fun slasher movies from, you know, the 80s. And uh, honestly, this was one I bought the DVD a while back. And I really did not think I was going to enjoy this movie. But, oh my God, I really did. This movie is a lot of fun. It's, you know, it's got a little bit of camp. But, you know, it's still, it's, you know, good female characters. You know, um, kind of a good premise. You know, you got the, the guy in this is very, very similar to the killer in the original movie. And, uh, but also too, I mean, this movie, it's, you know, it really is one of the better remakes. I highly do recommend it, you know, and there's some, some really nice, uh, callbacks and nods to the first two movies. You know, you get the, uh, guitar that, you know, look, the, you know, they end up using as like the guitar drill in Slumber Party Massacre 2. Um, you get some fun, you know, gory, good special effects, good kill scenes, things like that. So, yeah, I definitely recommend this one. If you can get it for a good price, I say pick it up. And even if you're a fan of the original Slumber Party Massacre, you know, it's like, um, yeah, enjoy this, man. You know, it's fun and, and similar to the original. The original movie was conceived, written, directed by women. This one was as well. So, you know, yeah, but just enjoy it. This is actually one of the better remakes, and I do recommend it. And I'm glad to finally upgrade to Blu-ray, so that's, that's cool. Uh... Could hope for a 4K, but I don't know. I don't think that's coming anytime soon. But in the meanwhile, just glad to have it in high definition. This one here, uh, you guys know, not really my favorite slasher series. And I know that there's a 4K. But honestly, I got this for a good dirt cheap price. And um, I'm fine with just having this on Blu-ray. And plus, the third one is on Blu-ray anyway. Of course, I'm talking about I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. Um, just, yeah, I'm not really big on these. Just, I'm not, you know, please, you know, if you love, you know, if you love these movies, that's great. You know, I'm not putting you down for it or anything like that. It's just, it's not my favorite slasher franchise. It just never was. Um, and just, you know, another thing too is like, I just don't really see the point of getting the 4K for this when, you know, you know, the first two were on 4K and then the third one's on Blu-ray. It just doesn't seem like it's really worth it. So I'd rather just... You know, go ahead and just get it on Blu-ray. Keep them all uniform. So, I imagine, yeah, uh, I'm not in that great of a hurry to get the the third one. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure, you know, when I can find it for a good price, I'll probably jump on that. And so, that way I have all three. But, uh, anyway, so, yeah. So, I still know what you did last summer on Blu-ray. So, and uh, this one here, uh, got this one mainly because... Oh my, these are two of the easiest Ab and Costello movies to find in the world. You could always find a DVD set that's got both of these movies together. And uh, I didn't know that there was a Blu-ray of it. So I figured, you know what, I'll go ahead and I had these on DVD, but now I upgrade them to Blu-ray. So now we have Ab and Costello, Jack and the Beanstalk, and the bonus film, Africa Screams. I mean, you guys know, I mean, you know, if you go like DVD hunting and stuff like that, I mean, you could find... I mean, my God, there are DVDs of this for a dollar, you know, that has both of the movies on it and stuff. And uh, I was surprised. I mean, actually, you know, I really thought that this was going to be a poor quality transfer and everything. But honestly, like, both of them look decent, you know. It's like, I imagine, yeah, they probably could do some work on these and, and like, really, you know, like, really, really, you know, get them to, you know, pretty much, like, 4K quality. But I'm not sure if anybody's really interested in jumping on that. So, for right now... Um, I'm happy just to have both of these movies in the nice and definitely an improvement over the DVD. So I'm happy about that. So, yeah, so those are my pickups. So, yeah. 
And now for the real reason we're here today. Uh, yeah, I finally got in my 4K Blu-ray of The Exorcist. So nice to finally have it. And I went for... I was going to get the limited edition uh, Steelbook with the five discs and everything else. But I... Yeah, that all got messed up. And then it turned out I was going to have to order it again. And, you know, it was going to take weeks for it to come in. So I just like... I saw this one here for, you know, a nice price. It's like, you know what, I'll just go ahead and go for this. You know, I don't really need the edition with all the bells and whistles. And the reason why is because I already have two editions with the bells and whistles on it. You know, I have this one here. You know, the nice 40th anniversary. Oh, wait. Got it upside down. I have the nice 40th anniversary edition of this, which I'm going to have to keep because... This one here is only the four discs. This one has the extra bonus disc with William Peter Blatty and the documentary William Peter Blatty and stuff on it. So I'm going to have to keep this. And, uh, but, uh, yeah. So got that. But also, too, I've had this beast. My brother gave this to me for Christmas. I believe it was uh, Christmas of 2020. So I've had this about 23 years. So I got this one here, this big, big sucker. I've had this for a long time. You could tell I've had it for a long time. You see, it's, I try to keep it in as best condition as I possibly can. But yeah, this is definitely one of my, you know, one of my gems, one of my prizes in my collection. And, you know, it's like, I know like the steel book is like, oh, that comes with the, you know, that comes with like the, the lobby cards. And, you know, that comes with a poster. It's like, well, I got lobby cards in here. Plus, I got the VHS, I got the, the uh, CD soundtrack, all the kind of film cell and everything else. As far as a poster goes, I got a nice big 24 by 36 in my hallway. So, yeah, so I think I'm good. So I think I could go ahead for something of a little bit more of like a, you know, after these two really nice editions, I think I can settle for just a, you know, a nice standard edition of The Exorcist here. And um, I know other people, there's not really much point in like, you know, uh, wasting too much time with it. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you've already seen people have done videos of this one before. And I like this one better, you know, because, you know, it's like if I was going to go for a standard edition, I'd rather have something with like the, you know, the original poster art, even if it does have the 18 labels down there for the British, you know, sensors. But and then, of course, no reversible cover art. And then there's the discs. Like I said, I know I'm kind of hurrying through this, but and just I know everybody's already showed these off. So there we go. So there are the two 4K discs and the two Blu-ray discs, and you know, and that was another thing too. I I mean, I already knew I was going to keep this edition, but one thing I was sitting there thinking to myself was like, you know, because this is an import, it's an import edition. I was like, you know, those Blu-rays are going to be region locked, so you know you're going to have to have this for the bonus features surprisingly they're not i was i was shocked i was like well i'll give it a shot so i took one of the blu-rays put it in my blu-ray player and you know the non-region free blu-ray player i put it in there and lo and behold it loaded up right away and started playing it's like oh my god you know it's like wow um but like i said you know i'm still gonna have to keep this because it's got the third disc you know with the extra bonus features but um Anyway, so yeah, I'm just, I'm glad to now finally have this on 4K. Uh, ultimately, it is a mixed bag, you know. I mean, the sound quality is amazing, you know. You got the DTS HD Master Audio, you got Dolby Atmos. Um, of course, you know, you got Dolby Vision, you got HDR, you know, um, Dolby Vision. And uh, just, you know, while, to me, while the sound quality was amazing... The picture quality was definitely hit and miss. There were scenes in this movie that looked phenomenal. The opening scene in Iraq, I know I'm probably repeating a lot of what other people said, but it is kind of the truth. Uh, I know like the uh, opening scene in Iraq where um, that looked fantastic. My God, that looks so good. And then there was, uh, you know, like uh, certain scenes. Like um, uh, one thing I noticed was kind of like a juxtaposition was, you know, the scene where father cares is going to visit his mother and i know it's like wow that was not a particularly good looking scene and everything and just it looked fuzzy i guess and it looked like they were really like trying to 
You know, because if you look at it on the Blu-ray, that scene where he goes to visit his mother, is per there is quite a bit of film grain in the picture. And it looks kind of fuzzy and weird, almost like they were really trying to get as much of that grain out of the picture as they could. And then, you know, like the very next scene with Reagan and her mother in the cellar, you know, looks beautiful. It's a really nicely lit scene and stuff. Um, you know, like one thing I know, I'm surprised I never really noticed before, but I thought it was actually pretty cool was, you know, noticing like, you know, a little bit more detail in the picture, you know, like the... The little bits of paint, you know, like that Reagan has like on her sweater and on her hands and things like this. And kind of the wear and tear on the Ouija board and stuff like that. You know, I kind of noticed that now. And, um, you know, and some other scenes. Yeah, I kind of think I got what they were talking about. You know, usually like the one part that everybody always refers to is the part where, where uh, Karis is in the subway station. And he's walking along and, and you know, so I think they were talking about like the, uh, I guess the... the uh, like the Coke machine or something is like out of focus or, or is fuzzy or something like that. I think I got what they were talking about. The one thing I do get that what people were talking about is in the third act with the exorcism and they were talking about the, um, you know, they were talking about color bleeding and it's like, my God, they were not joking. They really were not because I remember watching it and it's like the scene where Marin is, is doing the exorcism and he's reading, he's holding the Bible in his hands and everything like, if you look, you notice like Marin's hand is almost his entire hand is pink all of a sudden. And you see like the pink running down his fingers. He looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, he looks like he's wearing pink nail polish. I'm not even joking. It's like, you know, when he's reading the, you know, he's got the Bible. It does. It looks like the, it looks like the pink is just like, yeah. So I get what they were talking about, but, um, um, overall just, yeah, uh, it is. It's hit and miss. I mean, you know, it's definitely not the best 4K. I've seen a lot worse, but it's definitely not the best one I've ever seen. I mean, obviously, I'm going to keep it, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I mean, I think chances are um, I'm probably still going to watch this one from time to time, but I got to be honest. Like, I probably, most likely, if I'm going to be in the mood to watch uh, Exorcist, I'm probably going to probably just pop this baby back in, you know, because this on my TV looks phenomenal. Like, I love the way this picture quality looks on my TV. It looks gorgeous. So, I don't know. But, that's to say, you know, I was like, man, you know, I still, I really am happy and, uh, I really am happy to have this and, I don't know. But, uh, just, yeah, like I said, some parts of it, visual-wise, some parts are very hit and miss, but I do like it, you know, for the most part. But just, uh, yeah, they really, they kind of do need to do a better job in the future on some of their 4K transfers, pay a little bit better attention. But, but anyway, that's uh, pretty much it. So I just wanted to make this quick video and uh, talk about this real quick. And uh, yeah, I finally, I got my copy, so I'm happy about that. So so uh, if any of you took the time to watch this, and I know it's like, I mean, everybody and their mothers, their grandmothers, their grandfathers, everybody's made a video about the Exorcist 4K and but i mean if you really took the time out of your day to watch this one thank you so much i can't tell you how much i appreciate you and uh, it really means a lot to me that anybody would actually even care what i would think about it at this point so but thank you so much and you know take care and uh see you guys later